Smiley from The Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, August 25th to Saturday, August 31st. Okay, so last week we had a lot of energy come at us, really pressurizing the headspace almost to the point where we thought our heads were going to explode. We have the full moon in Aquarius to thank for that, for downloading us with a higher sense of intelligence, a greater, grander vision, and a lot of solutions to a lot of the problems that we've been banging our head against the wall about. However, we haven't been able to make sense of them as of yet. Again, I kind of gave this analogy about downloading a certain zip file on your computer and how you have to go into that zip file and kind of unzip the file in order to see all the individual files that are in it before you can start making sense of what you actually downloaded. Very similar in nature with some of the insights that we were downloaded with under that full moon in Aquarius on the 19th. And of course, it was a lot of raw energy. It came in, it really did really messed up our central nervous system. Again, magnifying the energy, the confusion in our headspace. And of course, that wasn't the major event with the full moon Aquarius because we had the Saturn square Jupiter pop off under that full moon event as well. And of course, that is a cha-cha-cha energy that we will be dealing with, taking us all the way into 2025 up until June Again, this is the first of a three-parter first quarter square between these two particular odor planets that are going to have us doing a little bit of growth, two steps forward, and then a little bit of refinement, one step back. This is, again, our chance to get very clear on our goals, on our ambitions, on our visions, on our dreams, and whether or not they're actually achievable, whether or not we actually have the willpower and discipline to do all the things that need to be done in order for us to actually get to where it is that we desire to be. And we wrapped up Leo season. That's right. We just moved into Virgo energy here yesterday on Thursday, the 22nd. And of course, that's only if you're tuning in to me on Friday evening. And if you are, I want to thank you so much for being here. If you're not, you're catching the replay, then yes, of course, we had a little bit of a jibber jam, let's call it, of energies there on the 22nd. As we kind of closed out that Leo energy, we moved into Virgo energy. The sun who rules over the Leo energy definitely did not enjoy giving up his rulership to move into the very serious, the very much let's get shit done energy of Virgo. But of course, in order for us to enjoy ourselves, in order for us to actually have some fun, we do have to kind of boss up. We have to address our tasks, our chores, our roles, responsibilities. We have to clear the way, clear the path for us to have a little bit of enjoyment, which of course is not taking place in Virgo season. So let's talk about what we have going on this week. Well, first of all, this is the last week of August. So we are still going to be working in the 6-8 vibration up until the end of August, which puts us in a major change, major transformation of the finer details, the inner working of our brains, the dialogue, the inner narrative that we have, the smaller details of our day-to-day -day lives, what needs to stay, what needs to go. There is going to be a dramatic shift when we move into to September. But of course, I have a couple of things to talk about before we actually get there. This is the official last week of August, but the official first week of Virgo season. And this first week of Virgo season includes the last quarter moon in Gemini energy popping off on the 26th. Let's talk about this for a second. So the last quarter moon of any moon cycle means that we're now reflecting back over this past month and we're really in reevaluation mode. We're processing things from the highest form of our intellect. And the last quarter moon always brings up a purge process. We need to decide what needs to stay, what needs to go. OK, the Gemini energy that, of course, is also ruled over by Mercury because Mercury is in his rulership over this Virgo energy, even though he's still retrograde in Leo energy, again, reviewing matters of the heart from the past. 
the Gemini energy is going to have us seeing both sides of the coin. The inner debate, the pros and cons is going to be very, very lengthy. We are going to be examining all of the options, all of the choices, all of the paths, all of the directions that we have essentially been bouncing from one path to the next, one choice point to the next, back and forth, back and forth. Just when we feel good about something, we're second guessing ourselves, we're back into square one confused as all F. The last quarter moon in Gemini definitely going to add to the pressure of the head space. We're not getting away from the head pressure of the head. Of, we're not getting away from all of the things processing, like all the windows being open, all of the, you know, flashes of ads and where's the music coming from. We're not getting away from that anytime soon. And that last quarter moon in Gemini energy is definitely going to help us whittle away, if you will, the options that are no longer viable, the options that are no longer triggering an emotional excitement or inspiration. We are essentially taking this very full plate of ours with all of these options, all of these choices, and we are going to smack our hand, smack dab in the middle of this plate, and we're clearing off one side of the plate. Okay, so this is gonna whittle down and eliminate some of those options so that we can start looking at a solid, let's say three options out of the maybe eight that we began with. So that is definitely going to help us. The last quarter moon is a refinement purging releasing stage because of course we have to kind of whittle away the things in preparation for the new moon, which I'll talk about here in a second. So this last quarter moon in Gemini, that takes place on the 26th. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, ruler over the Virgo energy, ruler over the Gemini energy. Mercury's coming out of his retrograde and going direct on the 28th. And he's going direct at 21 degrees in Leo energy. So we're going to be moving forward. We're going to be getting our heart and our head on the same page after this very deep analysis that we have been doing in our past heart matter issues. Of course, relationships have popped off since the solstice. We've had a lot of major topics and themes thrown at us that we weren't expecting. We have have been in constant review, constant looping, replaying a lot of the situations that just did not make sense to us at the time, probably still don't make sense to us now, but we're coming to a certain term of acceptance with where it is that we're currently at. We're reframing a lot of things. We're plucking out the silver linings. And even more importantly, we're starting to get an alignment, heart and head on what we now want to fully express as far as our truth or this new version of self or new creative ideas. And we are looking to really follow the path, commit to the path, the direction, to the choice that has our heart most excited, most inspired to actually bring something new to life. So that's the 28th. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who's been in this Virgo energy, also analyzing matters of the heart, but also just picking apart our physical realms and what is working and what is not and where we feel safe and secure and where it is that we don't, um, who and what is contributing to that, who and what is not. Venus is going to be moving into her rulership in Libra energy on the 29th. Okay, so, you know, there's there's some wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, energies building up towards the end of August here. And uh, let me also just say, this is the last week that Uranus, the Great Awakener, is going to be direct. He's going retrograde on the 1st of September. Also, the same day, Pluto will be moving back into the 29th critical crisis degree of Capricorn energy. My goodness. Again, another reason why you should be staying ahead of the energies here. I'm going to rattle off all the ways that you can do that in just a second. But essentially, once we have this last quarter moon in Gemini, once we start purging, once we start releasing, once we start reframing, restructuring our perspective and our options, then we start building towards the new moon in Virgo that will be taking place on the 2nd of September. So in case you haven't kind of, you know, pieced it together yet, we are in for a very, very rapid week of processing, of making choices, making decisions, weeding out the old, weeding out the weak, weeding out what is no longer serving us and doubling down on the things that are working, that do have us excited, that we want to grow into, 
that we want to bring to life that we want to pursue. We have a lot going on. Okay, so let me just kind of check off some homework issues here and then we're going to jump into what we can actually expect from the ever-changing landscape of the energies being thrown at us this week. First of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful little emojis in the comment section below. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for con your continued love and support here on YouTube, even though YouTube is not being very friendly to us as of late. People are having their comments deleted. People are thinking that I'm ignoring them because I don't see the, the notifications that they even commented on a video until days later. Uh, many of you not even getting the notifications that I even post any of the videos. And so again, this is a struggle, but I appreciate y'all sticking with me here. And let me also just say, I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon. Even as a free member, at least y'all are going to get the notifications of anything that I put out there on Patreon. So all the daily vibes, all the different energy forecasts, all the astro forecasts as well, they're free to view on Patreon. And as a free member over on Patreon, you get a little bit of glimpse of all of that paid content as well. So if you haven't jumped over to Patreon already, definitely going to recommend you do so. I thank those of you that have already made the transition. And of course, I thank all of you paid Patreons that of course are giving me the huge amount of love and support over on that platform as well. So how do you stay up with all of these energies? How do you keep up with it all? How do you stay ahead of the game? How do you roll instead of be dragged? Well, first of all, listen to all the forecasts that I put out. That's a great start. Virgo season forecast will give you the highs, the lows, the everything in between of what we have coming at us here in Virgo season. But also download the Virgo season e-guide. That is your energetic Bible, so to speak. That will keep you in check. It gives you an opportunity to kind of frame what you're going through now. Because let me just tell you, with all these retrograde planets, we're going to need to reference back to this particular point in time in a couple of months in order to make sense of a lot of the wildcard energies that are coming at us. The Virgo season e-guide, as well as all the other e-guides that I create for each and every zodiac season that we move into, they're supposed to help you stay in alignment. They're supposed to help you stay ahead of the game so that you're not surprised when life starts throwing curveballs at you. And heads up, Virgo season, there are plenty of curveballs coming at us. Again, Mercury comes out of a retrograde, Uranus goes in. Why is that significant? Well, because Mercury rules over the lower level of our intellect. Uranus rules over the highest form of our intellect that connects us to the highest forms of intelligence. So here we have our heart and head, Mercury in this Leo energy, moving forward in alignment, in agreement with what it is now that we want to do, what we want to pursue, again, operating from the lowest form of our intellect. And then Uranus goes into a retrograde in the Taurus energy, and suddenly we have an inner awakening. We reach new levels of consciousness within, new levels of awareness, which will likely have a major impact on that lower level of intellect and therefore put us in a situation to revisit, revise, re-edit some of those plans, some of those dreams, some of those visions, some of those goals. Not to mention Uranus retrograding in Taurus energy destabilizes our physical realm so that we can get rid of those poor ass unhealthy relationships so that we can detach from the materialistic possessions that have us blocked and trapped in our current life situations right now and not really kind of supporting us and moving on. This is a defragging. This is a releasing a purging of the physical form. And this is going to kind of lighten the load, if you will, to free up our options to be a little bit more independent, to move on into a new path, move on to a new direction. But of course, Uranus is going to be retrograde for pretty much the rest of this year, which is very telling. And the fact that Pluto retrogrades back into the 29th critical crisis degree of Capricorn energy on the same day, they're both Earth signs. We have the Great Transformer and the Great Awakener both doing their things here. And also Pluto's retrograde is a flashback to like March of this year, right? Let me just remind you, this is the last hurrah. This is the ending, the ending of the video game. This is like the big boss that we're fighting in order to actually graduate to restarting the video game with all of the perks and all the cheat codes, right? So like from now until November, it's going to be very, very dramatic. 
again, another reason why I, you know, put out the resources in which I do specifically, we're talking about the Virgo season e-guide because here's the thing, we have those retrogrades taking place for sure. We have these exchanges of energy taking place for sure, but we're also moving into eclipse season and that is no joke. Okay, we are getting a taste of what we will collectively karmically be working on from now until 2027. And if you think in late 2026 or in 2027, when I ask you to think back to this particular point in time, the end of August, when we first moved into Virgo season here in 2024, that you're going to re remember what was consuming your mind. You're going to remember the topics and themes that had you conflicted. No, you're not going to remember. This is why. We do the e-guides. We have a point of reference that we can come back to to make sense of where it is that we are essentially going to be confused in 2026, 2027. And we're going to need to, you know, come back to 2024 to say, well, you know, what was I building? What was I creating through that eclipse season? Like what wild card energies were thrown my way? What? How did I beat the big boss at the end of the Pluto Capricorn transit? Like what was this all about? You're not going to remember. This is why we have to get it written down on paper. This is why we do what we do in order to stay in alignment and mostly stay ahead of the game when it comes to all of these energetic transitions. We are closing cycles out. 2026, 2027 is going to be a major, major deal. If you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that is when I think the revolution slash rebellion is going to be popping off in a big way. And if you think that life is crazy right now, uh, you're just in boot, you're in boot camp, you're in training for what's going to be taking place in a couple of years time. Again, it's time we do the work now. Now you hear me talking about doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, Virgo season, time to get our shit together. This is what it's all about. And so to really tap into what this season is going to mean for you and apply it to your chart and understand where certain activations are taking place in order for the closure, the releasing, the purging, in order for there to be a clean slate for growth, for building, for creation, again, capture it on paper. You're going to need to reflect back on this particular point in time, time and time again, as we move into 2025 and get carried into 2027. That eclipse season that we are jumping into here at the end of Virgo season is merely a toe in the water, so to speak, testing those waters of some very heavy healing karmic chapters that we are moving through from now until 2027. That's why I do what I do. We got to stay ahead of the game. So with that being said, uh, this week, we got a lot coming at us. And of course, wrapping up the last week of August means that I will be working very, very hard on getting the September Zodiac forecast ready and available for download. Definitely expect that towards the end of the week. But with all of that being said, let's jump into some of the ascension symptoms that we can expect to pop off with these energies coming at us here this week. So first of all, I just want to talk about and just kind of give a reminder to that the Virgo energy is the only earth sign that is ruled over by Mercury. Mercury rules over the headspace. It's an air energy. It's intellect. It's thought. It's ideas. It's vision. Now, we have to be very careful with our mental plane, with our narrative, with our dialogue in Virgo season, because whatever it is that we focus on, we actually manifest. We bring it to life. This is very much mind equals matter. Okay. But also mind over matter. What does that mean? Well, I don't know. Take a good look around. Are you happy? Are you content with your life? Most of us would say no. Well, that's good because what does that mean? It means that there's room for improvement. What does Virgo energy do? It helps us to do better. It helps us to be better. It helps us to improve, especially with taking care of ourselves, prioritizing ourselves, especially where health and wellness is concerned. But here's the thing, if your physical realm doesn't feel so hot, doesn't feel so good, well, you could get pretty depressed over that. Oh, nothing's working. Oh, nothing good is happening. Oh, the pain, the fear, the trauma. You could really find yourself in a very dark place if you allow it to be that way. And in that case, you are focusing on all the problems. You are focusing on the horribleness. You're focusing on ug the ugliness of this earth plane, which what's that going to mean? It means that you're going to manifest and create more of that exact thing. Do we want to do that? Absolutely not. What do we have to do to prevent that? Flip 
the script. What does that mean? It means analyzing where it is that you're unhappy with your life and bossing up and being responsible and accountable for how it is that it ended up this way and even more accountable and responsible for tapping into your creator abilities, getting your shit together and doing something about it. Only you can prevent forest fires. No, I'm just joking. Well, no, true. Only you can prevent forest fires. But at the same time, only you can kind of, you know, fix your life. And sometimes, even if you can't fix the physical circumstances, you do have power and control over the perspective, over the way that you're looking at it. So if you find yourself in a certain situation or circumstance where your life, your physical realm is not so good, not so happy, and you wreck your brain trying to figure out what you could do to improve it, and you come to a conclusion, which very few of us will do, that we don't have power and control over our physical realms, because we always do. We always have choices. We always have options. The very minimalist thing that you could do is shake your head and orient to a more positive mindset. The only way to break out of the negativity of the physical realm is to shift your perspective, okay? What you focus on, so again, if you focus on a positive narrative while you're still dealing with some negative situations, that positive narrative is going to allow you to manifest solutions, manifest opportunities, options to get out of it. If you are not doing the work to gain control over your headspace, then unfortunately for you, you're not going to activate your creator abilities. We are in exam season, my friends. We are in our, let's call it training period right now over the power that we have over our emotions and over our mental plane. If you do not have the ability to orient to positivity while dealing with some negative ass solutions, then you, my friend, are not going to be creating such a good place for yourself. That is on you. We have every opportunity, especially in Virgo season, to get our shit together, to get our mind right, to come up with solutions to some of the problems that we've been, again, just banging our head against the wall about, crying, whining, and complaining about. And the least that you could do if you can't change the world around you is change the world inside of you. And that is the way that you need to flip the script and rewrite your inner dialogue, your inner narrative, and how you see the world. It is a very, very, very intense testing period right now. It should be, right? We're not going to give the power to the people that have a poor ass mental plane. That would be silly. This is how we ended up in this situation, okay? We need the healers to step forward. We need those that have exercised the, their demons that have tested their abilities to overwrite their shadow work, to overwrite their mental narrative. We need those people to lead us into creating a realm of reality that not only looks good, that feels good. And it all starts with what you allow to take up time, energy, and space in your head. So mind over matter and mind equals matter. That's what you should be reciting each and every single day. You don't like something, do something about it. How do you do that? Flip the script, start there. That is how we create options. That is how we create opportunities. Now, no joke, there's a lot of pressure on the headspace, right? We're still feeling a lot of tension in the headspace. Mercury's still retrograde. Even when he goes direct, we're still gonna be in a post-retrograde shadow period for two weeks which means that, yeah, we're going to feel a little bit lighter on our, let's call it head space and heart space. However, the pressure on the head space, still very much there. Confusion, still very much there. The intricacies of trying to come up with a plan, a path, a strategy on how we're going to resolve some of these issues, still very much there, which means that you're going to have the tension built up in your neck first and foremost, right? We have been rigid, just waiting for the ball to drop. Now we're starting to kind of twist our head from one place to the other. We're trying to scan. We're trying to look up and down. We're focused in on the smaller details in this Virgo energy because that is where the, well, they always say that the devil's in the details. It really is, right? The devil is in the details. This is why we have to focus in on the details because our habits, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we operate, that makes or breaks our long-term success or failure. So we really have to examine our headspace. What do we allow to consume too much time, energy, and space in our head? What are we focused on? What are we obsessed with? 
what it is that we could do better that we're failing to actually implement to actually do better, okay? We have to get our shit together. There's been a lot of craziness, a lot of chaos. Virgo season allows us to put the ducks back in the row. Everything has a place we need to create order in our headspace before we're going to see that kind of order manifest in our physical realm. So the neck tension, of course, there is this stiffness in our neck. We are kind of bearing the weight of the world on our shoulders. That's where that tension is coming from. It is going to create this tension headache. It feels like there is a very tight elastic band around our headspace. And even when we take that band off, we can still feel where that band was applying pressure to our headspace. There are going to be days... And I would say, especially as Mercury kind of comes out of his retrograde and goes direct, there's going to be days where you're going to feel so dumb. Like you can't, you can't hold a thought if your life depended on you. The brain fog that takes over, especially when Mercury is stationing direct, is very, very real. But then all of a sudden, download. All of a sudden, insight. All of a sudden, clarity. All of a sudden, aha moment. And then we're kind of moving with that until we run into another layer of brain fog again. That headspace is rapidly processing so many different things that you're not even aware of. Again, unzipping the zip file to see all of the files that we actually downloaded. We're trying to make sense of this. This is the new operating system that comes with the new version of self. We're integrating it through Virgo season. We're going to be able to understand and therefore articulate some of the things, some of the pop-offs, some of the epiphanies, especially the good downloaded under that full moon in Aquarius, leveling us up in awareness leveling us up in consciousness okay we we haven't made full sense we haven't even made half sense out of some of the amazing downloads of intelligence that we received around that full moon in aquarius so we do have a lot going on in our headspace. We do have days where our head is going to feel very heavy very weighted like it's like 800 pounds, let's say, can hardly keep your head sitting up on your neck space. There are going to be days we are in an earth energy where we just want to curl up in a ball and sleep it off. However, we do not procrastinate. We do not waste time in Virgo season. So the negative narrative that you are going to need to kind of bully yourself into getting your ass up and doing all the things that you should have been doing all along. Sometimes we have to give ourselves tough love in order to actually get motivated, get determined to get up, to get things done, to get our shit together so that we can move on. This headspace is a back and forth, if you will, refining the balance needed in order to keep yourself accountable, which technically comes with a tough love life narrative. And you're going to say, well, isn't that narrative going to create, you know, situations and circumstances in your phys physical realm of that vibration and frequency? Well, if it means that you get your ass up and you get your ass in gear and that you're able to tackle some of the clutter in the rooms that you have not even looked in for the past God knows how long, and it has you going through your emails that you haven't opened and it has you paying the bills that you haven't really addressed and it has you making the doctor's appointments that you've been putting off and it has you doing all of the things to get your priority list back in a state of order, is that such a bad thing? I don't think so. Sometimes we have to pull out that bully type of narrative for ourselves in order to make us do all of the things that we should have been doing all along. So, of course, we want to do it in moderation. We want to do that in a balanced type of inner dialogue and perspective and narrative. But at the end of the day, we have no time to sit around and whine and complain. This is not what this season is about. So that inner dialogue is definitely going to be a tricky one. It is going to have a major impact on us getting, you know, our ducks in a row, essentially. Like I said, procrastination is something that we all want to do, but we're not doing it in Virgo season. Let's put it to you this way. We only have a very short amount of control in Virgo season. We'd like to think that we have control over everything all the time. No, we don't. Okay. Okay. When Mercury comes out of his post-retrograde shadow period, there are but days before we slip into that eclipse energy and we have no power, no control over eclipse energy. It's wild card energy. The universe is about to put us on the path that we failed to put ourselves upon. We do not have a say about it, okay? We do not see the greater, grander vision that our higher self sees. Therefore, it could feel like we're being dragged. 
This is again why I need you to stay ahead of the energy shifts. But at the same time, there is this element where we feel like we are getting a grip. We feel like we have a little bit more control than anything else. And in order for us to actually enjoy the good parts in life, that side note are coming. OK, there are good parts in life. It's just so many people fixate on the bad again that they only see the bad. It's just like when you declare uh, I'm going to give you two different analogies. When you declare, hey, universe, I want to see a yellow vehicle. Suddenly you start seeing yellow vehicles everywhere. That's a positive a positive way to orient your mind versus here's another analogy. You have the flu, your stomach sick, and you notice how many food commercials there actually are on TV, on the radio, on your streaming devices, right? You don't want to see that. You want to avoid that. You're, you're so focused on, oh, my stomach hurts so bad. Oh, I feel like I'm going to get sick. Oh, that all you do is start manifesting food, 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 food. So again, be very cautiously aware of where your mind is at, what you're focused on. And if it is not of the highest caliber, the highest vibration, the highest nature, shift that narrative. OK, so talking about hunger, we have been going through a lot of uh, dietary changes, a lot of craving changes. Uh, many of us through Leo season were sick as F, could not put a bite of food in us without wanting to spew it all back up. And then there were other parts of Leo season where, again, we were tapping into that lion energy and we just wanted to, you know, just eat a whole zebra to ourselves. OK, um, this particular season has us eating better, refining our food better, really addressing our cravings better, because, of course, Virgo energy is about health and wellness and our healthy habits versus our not so healthy habits. We are essentially going through a detox. That detox, yes, is energetic, but it affects the mind, the body, the soul. And so the detox that we're going through is in pure Virgo energy style, which is purification, right? This is why we review. This is why we evaluate. This is why we get critical. This is why we get judgy in Virgo season, because we have to discern what needs to stay, what needs to go. What are good habits? What are better habits? Where do I have a, a room to improve in taking care of myself? And where am I failing to do all of those things? This is a time for us to really focus on improvements, especially with the food that we're putting in our bodies. Because again, we are looking to purify. We're being I'm going to say being guided to a more natural state of being. And that really depends on what we are putting into our bodies, whether it be information or food. OK, so we're going to be refining that food issue. We are definitely going to have some stomach issues. Let's not you know, let's not think that we can just choose good food and we're never going to have stomach issues again. Virgo energy, typically speaking, carries a lot of anxiety because Mercury rules over Virgo energy. So our central nervous system is a little bit more uh, intensified than normal. We tend to be a little bit anxious, a little bit of a worry war in Virgo energy because we're worried that we're going to mess up. Again, perfectionism is a very strong quality in Virgo season. We're afraid we're going to mess up. We're afraid we're going to choose the wrong thing. We're afraid, you know, just nervous, just worried, just overall, just an anxious state of being. And again, this is why we are in exam period to see how much power we actually have over our headspace and over our emotions because we have to identify when we're carrying this restless, anxious type of energy and all that is is because we don't have a focus, we don't have a channel to put it in and to do something about it. And so it does have a major, major impact on our stomachs. And we are going to have anything from, you know, acid reflux to the bubble guts, uh, a lot of belching, a lot of reverse belching coming out the other way, if you know what I mean, um, because we're trying to clear ourselves out, clean ourselves out. And again, depending on your dietary issues and what it is that you're actually putting in your body, that's going to have a major impact on how many bathroom trips you're actually going to be making throughout Virgo season. So, you know, when they say we got to get shit done, well, we got to get shit done in our bodies, too. And the detox, the clean out, the purge isn't pleasant. It's not supposed to be. 
we are supposed to be lightening the load, mind, body, and soul. And that is very highly suggestive that we're going to be making a little bit more frequently uh, the trips to the bathroom, if I do say so myself. Okay, nobody wants to talk about that, but it's a very important part. We literally hold on to our shit. Okay, we procrastinate even in doing those things. And what happens when we hold on to old emotions, old thoughts, old ideas, old dreams, old visions? We get backed up, right? We get confused. We get all over the place. We get sluggish. We want to procrastinate. We want to curl into a ball. We have no time, no energy to do that here in Virgo season. It's time to get our shit together. We got to boss up, especially for when Venus moves into her rulership and Libra energy. Now, if you haven't listened to the Virgo season astro forecast and downloaded the e-guide, you may not know that when we move into Virgo season, even if we didn't have the eclipse energies on us towards the end of Virgo season, shit always hits the fan. Why? Because we're moving into Libra season after Virgo season and that triggers the equinox and that is a rebalancing of the karmic scales that got tipped in one direction over the other under the solstice energy of cancer season. So then we're coming into, let's call it an opportunity to find balance, to find peace and harmony and acceptance. But this time around, we have eclipse season cluster effing the already very rapid moving parts of what every Virgo season always is. So that's going to be an extra layer of wild card energies, an extra layer of confusion and chaos. However, where I'm going with this is, is that on September 22nd, when we move into Libra energy, when we move into that Equinox energy, Venus, who rules over Libra season and has rulership over that particular Equinox gateway, she moves out of her rulership in Libra energy. She moves into Scorpio energy. That is a big deal. That is shadow work. That is new passions, new desires. And so let's reframe this for a second. Venus currently in Virgo energy. She's discerning. She's criticizing. She's reevaluating what needs to stay, what needs to go. When she moves into her rulership and Libra and energy, this is when she brings things into balance, especially where her relationships and her finances are, are concerned, where her day-to-day -day life is concerned. Right now, we're trying to eliminate the things that are preventing us from having a safe, secure, happy-go-lucky, joyful kind of life. In Libra season, we're going to move into the shallow end, have a little bit more fun, really kind of focus on what we could be doing for ourselves to create more happiness, more joy, more safety, more security, especially where our emotions, where relationships and finances are concerned. And then we move into Scorpio energy, and that is where our desires come full stop, right? That's when we move into the deep end of our shadow work of our, let's call it dysfunction, where relationships and money matters are concerned. That's where we unpack all of the darkness, all of the pain, all of the trauma that's preventing us from actually living a happy-go-lucky life. There's a lot of intimacy issues. There's a lot of sexual issues that come up with Venus in the Scorpio energy, but Scorpio energy is the transformation of the emotion and soul self. And so we are going to be in a deep purge when we move into that particular sector and under the equinox energy and under the eclipse energy, let me just say that Libra season transition into the equinox is smack dab in the middle of eclipse season. It is going to be quite a doozy. That's why we have to get our shit together now, especially when we have this false sense of control. It's time to get our ducks in a row. It's time to prepare for all of the things that we don't have control over coming at us here at the end of Virgo season. So again, time to get grounded, time to get focused, time to get kind of, you know, more purified, more healthy, more in alignment with what it is, you know, good habits, good routines, all the good things that we want to bring into life. Because when Venus moves into Libra energy, we're going to have the opportunity to balance those particular energies out. So that means that there's going to be some heart activations, of course, but the good news is, is that when Venus moves into Libra energy, the heart activations aren't going to be as intense because we stick semi in the shallow end of our thoughts, of our emotions, of our experiences in Libra and energy. We just want to, we, we want to love everybody. We want everybody to get along. We, we just love love. We love all the things that make us look good and feel good. Um, we just, we like to have fun. We like to have a good time. Now, is there going to be a whole hell of a lot of that? Probably not in Virgo season where we're kind of addressing, you know, work 
concerns where we, we got to get our shit together, where we got to do all the things that we keep putting off and putting off and putting off. But there is this lightheartedness that takes over when Venus moves into Libra energy that is going to make the tasks, the chores, the roles, responsibilities, not as heavy, not as weighted, not as confining as they could be with some other transits. So I want to talk about our eyes for a second. We kind of talked about the shoulders and the neck and the head. Our eyes, there's going to be some dry eyes, okay? We're going to find ourselves fixated in our visuals. What does that mean? So sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I literally need to stand in front of my house and stare at my house for a prolonged amount of time in order for me to get a visual on what I need to do for yard work or landscaping, especially where new plans and strategies are concerned. Doesn't necessarily have to be looking at your house. You could just find yourself off in a daze, but what you're doing is you're actually constructing a visual. You're constructing a visual of a plan of a strategy to bring something new to life. And so our eyes, you know, sometimes when you find yourself in a daze and you haven't really blinked in, in, in a very long time, how like your eyes get like dry and sticky, it's that kind of vibe. It's also going to put us in a situation where we're a little bit squinty. And what I mean by that is like we're really it's almost like we have a visual in our mind space where we're replaying a movie. It feels like in our mind, but we're thinking about what we want to do in the future. It's like we're watching a futuristic movie of plans of strategies, but we're having a hard time really seeing like, who is that? So you start squinting in real life, even though the visuals in your head, you start squinting. And even if you're looking at certain areas of your life, you're just, you, you know, you got it. It's the analyzation, you know, the analyzation look, that comes over your face when you're really thinking very hard. Well, this is Virgo season, my friends. So we are thinking very hard. We are processing at an accelerated rate, which means that the dry eyes and the squinting definitely going to have a major impact on where we are focused as far as identifying the problematic areas, identifying what it is that we need to improve, need to do better. We're really focused on the visual that we have to gain in our mind's eye before we can go ahead, take action upon it. So yeah, dry squinty eyes, definitely going to be the name of the game this week, especially when we start kind of, you know, weeding out what needs to go from that last quarter moon and Gemini energy. That's really going to help us kind of eliminate some of the choices and options that we've been trying to at least consider for our futuristic moves, that's gonna super help us out. And then Mercury, again, ruler of the mental plane, going to go direct, that's gonna help us out. And then Venus moving into Libra energy, well, that's gonna help us out. And then Uranus going retrograde, well, that is going to totally change the game. That is putting us in a totally different perspective of observing our lives from like the biggest bird eye type of view that you could possibly get. So just when we think we have a well-oiled plan, let's say, suddenly there's going to be a zap of lightning where suddenly we see where we could do it faster. We could see it do more efficiently. We could see just a, a, just a, a, a better, more improved plan versus the one that we initially are going to have. But again, all to do with the headspace, all to do with the visual, all to do with the eyes. I want you to pay attention for any skin eruptions. Uh, so we're talking like rash, we're talking breakouts, we're talking even bug bites in a concentrated area of your body. Now again, our skin is our lar largest organ. By the time there is an issue on our skin that we are looking at, there is a deeper, darker concern there. Now, itchiness, definitely an indicator of some internal organs or energy blockages releasing those particular cluster Fs and rising to the surface of our awareness. So, you know, we're not so concerned of itchiness. Itchy is a good sign of healing. Of evolving um, but if you have like a red flare-up or you have a lot of cysts maybe you have cystic acne maybe there are new just you know bug bites in a concentrated area of your body you're going to want to pay attention to where that particular area of body is because that is going to be your key hints and clues on what is stuck in that area of your physical form. So we all have meridian channels. That's how the energy, the chi, the mana, the prana, whatever you wanna call it, moves through our physical form. We have blockages 
for emotional blockages. We have cellular memory blockages. We have physical, biological health issues that could create blockages as well. So when there is a concentrated, let's call it focus or attention on a certain area of our body, and because we're talking about the skin, we're talking about skin eruptions, that is going to lead you down a little bit of a rabbit hole to kind of have to dig deeper and see where the energy of blockage is in, in that particular area of the body and the emotion that could be trapped because of that particular area of body. So if it's on your face, please look up Chinese face mapping. That's gonna indicate the organs that particular parts of your face actually are connected to. Um, there is a whole mapping system of our physical forms that lead to different chakra points, different emotions that are connected to those chakra points, and that in turn is going to lead you to the work that needs to be done. Again, likely reframing either your perspective or your emotional disposition. So I feel like um, between, you know, the head and the skin eruptions and the eyes, the head is really the major focus here. Again, with the no nonsense, get your shit together type of narrative, we're definitely nitpicky when it comes to ourselves with the world around us. We have to be. Um, I'm just going to kind of regurgitate this because I know I've said it many times. We often t talk about like, oh, only God can judge. Like you shouldn't judge. You shouldn't judge. You shouldn't judge. Well, we need to judge. Okay. We are God. We need to judge. That's how we that's how we form our own moral compass. That's how we figure out what works for us, what doesn't. We, it's not necessarily saying pointing the finger like everybody thinks judging means like, oh, you're a bad person, shame on you, shame on you. It's not about that. It's about judging what other people are doing because they are not you, but they are another aspect of God consciousness. And you're trying to say, oh, Oh, I see what they're doing. I've never seen that before. I've never even thought to approach that problem that way. I really like the way that that person is going about, you know, tackling this problem. I think I want to try that. Okay. That is a judgment equally. Oh, I do not like how that person is acting. Oh my goodness. How embarrassing for them. Oh my goodness. Nope. Not for me. Well, you're creating a judgment call to say, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I don't act like that person because that doesn't feel good to me. It isn't raw and authentic to my vibration, to my frequency, to my soul self. And so all of these people out there going, don't judge, don't judge. Okay, we're in Virgo season. Now is the time to judge. Now is the time to critique. Now is the time to analyze. Now is the time to nitpick. Not acting, oh, I'm better than this person because I have a better, you know, moral ethic or I do things differently and better than that person. We're not, okay, not that kind of judging. That's called high school pettiness. We're not doing that. Okay, welcome to adulthood. We're not doing that. We are observing. We are critiquing. We are judging in order for us to get our inner realm more in alignment with who it is that we're authentically meant to be which means that we have to cast some sort of judgment on what it is that we're observing, things that we like, things that we don't like, things that we want to try, things that we don't want to try, things that we would like to be like more of and things that we would never want to ever be like ever again. That is how we kind of inch our way into being who it is that we're always meant to be. This is how we identify bad habits. This is how we identify bad narratives. This is how we judge and criticize thyself in relation to observing how other people may act and react and behave. We need to have that level of discernment in order for us to figure out again, what needs to stay, what needs to go, where we can do better, where we can improve and where we need to cut certain things off altogether. This is the season for criticizing, for evaluating, for judgment, not from a I'm better than you situation, but from a I am you but I am a different faucet of you and therefore I am going to operate slightly different, okay? We are all of God consciousness. God decided one day, and I'm talking about creator energy, I'm talking about the architect, I'm not talking about no Bible shit, no earth man, God made shit, okay? We're talking about the all conscious creator. He got bored one day. He was like, how can I experience every single variable to ever exist? How can I experience every version of self that could ever come into existence? That's right. I'm going to start piecing myself off. This is how we all gained a soul. This is all how we're operating under an oversoul, an archetype, if you will. But at the end of the day, we are all God consciousness walking this earth plane. We all need to be different. That's why we come here. But we are all also alike. 
Okay. We need to differentiate a little tiny bit from your neighbor, from your friend, from your family. You need to be different. Okay, that it would make no sense for us to come here and all be the same vibration, all think the same, all feel the same. If we want to do that, we should have kept God in one big cluster F up there without him individualizing himself into separate souls in order for us to come to this earth plane to have different experiences in order for us to learn who it is that we are as individuals before we go back and, you know, kind of align with the greater, grander source. We're all the same when we come from source. It's when we come here and have an opportunity to individualize that makes us different, that makes us all experience different variables of what it is to have these different life experiences. That is what God consciousness intended to do from the beginning. That's what we will continue to do until we return to source. So to a certain extent, we are in the judgy, criticizing, reevaluating situation in season for a reason. Again, just in the long term. Leo season triggered and activated more of our authentic self. Now we want to bring that authentic self into full form, into full expression. Virgo energy is like, mm, how are we going to do that? Well, I don't know. I can't be this new version of self. Well, this old belief system acting the same old fool as I was. So I'm going to have to eliminate that particular pattern and behavior in order to actually align more and more with this new version of self. We do the evaluation, we do the tug of war, we do the sorting out the elimination process through Virgo season, and then we find a new balance, we find a new sense of self, we find peace and harmony within this merging of fragments of self into a new level of wholeness in Libra season. And even then, we're still trying to bring the scales into balance. It's not until Scorpio season that that full merging of mind, body, soul, and spirit actually takes place. That's why Scorpio season is very intense. So this is where we're at. This is why we got to get our shit together. This is why we got to get shit done. Now, uh, just the other thing that I want to talk about, our throat space, our lips, around our lips. You could break out around your lips. You could have a rash break out around your lips. You could have itchiness in your throat or the constant need to clear your throat. Mercury is going direct people. In Leo energy, he has a new truth to speak. He has new ideas he wants to share, but we're not able to articulate them as of yet. And there's all this fire energy built up in our mouths. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of issues around dry, sore, itchy lips around the mouth. Um, even your teeth may feel a little bit, I'm going to say, inflamed, your gums inflamed, if you will, sore teeth. Maybe you're biting your lip. Maybe you're biting your cheek. There's all kinds of fire energy stuck in there. And so, of course, itchiness is a great indicator that we are healing our ability to vocalize our wants, needs, and desires, our true hearts, passions, and desires, let's say, in this Leo energy. But the clearing means that there's some sort of gunk there. There's some sort of fear there. There's some sort of old, let's call it version of self that we're literally choking on in order to allow the new form of expression to actually be seen, to actually be heard. And so for the most part, yes, Virgo season is an earth energy. Yes, our physical bodies are heavy, are weighted because we have to become more present in our physical bodies in order to figure out how it is that we feel about certain situations and circumstances that we're currently contemplating and visualizing in our head. But the, the majority of the energy is still in the headspace. It's still from like the heart chakra up. OK, so we're still refining, we're still processing, we're still piecing things together. We're still kind of intellectualizing, we're planning. There's still a lot going on in the headspace and we're not really going to feel, um, I'm going to say, a whole lot of mystical energies in an earth sign. It's just not going to happen. And so we are more human now than we've ever been. We are more grounded and anchored to earth than we have ever been. Virgo season is a time for us to get down to the nitty gritty. And we have to be in the physical form in order to clear out the gunk, in order to detox from the old, in order to shift our perspective and heart space into a new path, into a new direction. And that all comes with planning and strategizing this new goal, this new vision, this new dream and allowing our bodies to respond to it. Again, judging, critiquing, analyzing where it is that changes need to be made. We're in a mutable season. Mutability is a time to be flexible, a time to change, a time to transform, a time to adapt. We got to get our shit together. There's no time to waste. 
we got to get a grip. So guys, that is all the information that I have for you for this week coming at us. I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for sharing time, energy, and space, not only with me, but with the rest of the community here this evening. I want to thank you all so much for the love and support. I want to thank you for showing up for me, but mostly I want to thank you for showing up for yourself. I hope you have a beautiful week. I send you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.